Let's get more. I'm joined by legendary ABC cricket commentator Jim Maxwell, who joins us out of uh, Sydney. Jim, Jones was a larger-than-life character, but such talent he had, and he, he had all the kids in the 80s just loving cricket. He certainly did, yes. Uh, he had a splodge of zinc cream on his nose. He, he had a, uh, a floppy hat, but he was just a bundle of energy all the time. He brought a love and a passion to the game that was infectious for so many young people who followed the game, particularly with one-day cricket. That's where he really made his mark, even though he was a significant test match cricketer. He averaged you know, 46 in 52 test matches. And you mentioned the, the double hundred there in, in Chennai. But it was the 87 World Cup uh, there was a large part of his CV, as well as the 1989 Ashes win under Alan Border, his mate that used to rile him along. I remember talking to him one day about batting uh, in one-day cricket because his running between the wickets was quite frenetic. And uh, he reckoned when he was running with Michael Bevan, he could sort of tum tumble, turn like a, a, a swimmer coming quickly off the wall <laughs> uh, to run three in, in less than about 60 seconds, some remarkable time. He was big on numbers. He loved numbers and he loved an argument. He was he was perennially outspoken uh, right through his playing days and, of course, more recently as a commentator, a coach, an ambassador. He was one of the very few cricket people who put their foot into Afghanistan to help them out. So he was very keen to be sharing his experiences and his knowledge of the game as well as... Uh, making a living, as it were, uh, from uh, being a commentator. He worked on the ABC at one stage on radio uh, and, and always had an opinion which people enjoy. Uh, although at one point, Jim, I do remember that sort of opinion, that outspokenness almost overshadowed his cricketing genius because he sort of he, he riled people up the wrong way, particularly his fellow players and officials at the time. Do you think people understood him a little bit better, particularly as he moved into being a commentator? Uh, yes. I, I, I think if you go back to his playing, playing days, uh, the, the one instance that uh, stood out in his um, unspokenness, uh, which counted against him in the Australian team, as it turned out, was the night at the SCG where he, he got up the nose of Kirtley Ambrose, who he said that was providing a distraction by wearing white armbands <laughs> with a white cricket ball. Now, at that point of the summer, Kirtley Ambrose had been a bit below his best. Well, all of a sudden, he was at his best as a result of this taunt, uh, sledge, whatever you want to call it, from Dino. And uh, that was counterproductive for <laughs> Australia. But um, he, look, he, he wasn't he wasn't the sort of fellow who was inclined to step back. Uh, if there's if there was something that needed to be needed to be said, he would he put his foot in it. Even the other day, I noticed on the the feedback that you get now on social media, someone had a crack at him about the way he does his commentary or did his commentary on television, and Dino's response was swift and typically to the point. He said, "Well, mate." If you don't like it, hit the mute button. <laughs>